Well, I'm Bob Apoff. Uh, I farm uh, in Dane County, uh, just south of Madison. And uh, we have a ferro to finish hog operation as well as a grain operation. Uh, we have actually, uh, we started into no-till kind of a little bit by accident there back in the mid-90s. Uh, we'd gotten a planter in that was, seemed to be uh, set up a little bit better. We'd put some uh, row cleaners onto it, got a little short of time one spring, and we just started experimenting a little bit. It was just kind of by accident. Uh, we liked the results we saw early on, uh, and then we've kind of continued to progress as uh, technology has allowed us to do it. And uh, so we've now have gotten to where we're pretty much primarily no-till. The only tillage that may be done is if there was a, if we've isolated a compaction uh, problem or that there might have been just a little bit of a, a channelized flow in a field or anything. But other than that, we pretty well have parked the chisel plow in the, in the field cultivator and primarily the tillage operation all occurs on the corn planter. Well, I think one of the challenges when you do no-till, and especially if you have a livestock operation, is that uh, when you have to uh, spread the manure of how you can best get it into the field. And with the liquid manure, that uh, we have some challenges with that. We'd like to get it incorporated as quick as we can to save the nutrients. In addition to that, uh, we also want to incorporate it so that we can reduce the odor uh, in the application area. And, but the challenge is, is most of the injection systems on these tankers or in the drag lines are, uh, do quite a bit of tillage. They leave the field very rough and so we're always coming back with doing a finishing operation to try to smooth them up. And so really we're pulling that field back out of no-till. And uh, so we've been looking around and so we kind of ran across uh, uh, some low disturbance manure incorporation systems here. Uh, we've got uh, this one uh, that uh, is a VTI from Washington, Iowa. It's a, it's, a, it's a system that we've been very pleased with. Uh, able to go through some tremendous uh, residue areas here. Uh, we can come in right behind the combine in the fall and uh, not have any uh, problems with uh, plugging. Uh, the trash flows through it very nicely. It uh, does a great job of covering uh, the uh, uh, area that it uh, opened up to, to put the manure into and that actually leaves the field smooth enough that we're able to come back with our no-till planter without any further tillage. And uh, so we're quite pleased with uh, uh, the performance of that equipment. When you take a look at, uh, at this uh, new uh, uh, low disturbance manure incorporation, when you look at it, you think you're going to do a tremendous amount of tillage uh, versus the uh, single shank design that you had on the old injectors. In reality, what you've got is you've got a, a large uh, turbo coulter that runs in front to open up the slot of the soil. Uh, the uh, manure uh, tube uh, runs down right behind it, and then there's two smaller closing coulters that actually cover everything back up over it. And again, uh, it's just amazing to see just how much residue remains after that. We, we estimate that there's between 90 and 95 percent of the residue still staying on the field after the uh, application of the manure with this system. One of the things we see with, uh, with manure, and any time we apply the manure, uh, we actually like to try to get additional uh, uh, nitrogen. Uh, we like to spread the uh, forms of nitrogen over. Uh, the, the, the ground and so we don't rely a hundred percent on the manure and so we'll actually usually put it in at two-thirds to three-quarters of the nitrogen need and then come back with uh, supplemental nitrogen in the form of either a dry form or a, or a, or a spreadable form that we're putting on with the pre-emergence.